What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a, quite a bit since I've been able to get some footage up for you guys, but today I have so, a necessity to get some info up for you guys just because it's so freaking hot out here. Many people have been asking me, hey Jeremy, what do you do for your AC component if we can't get our 12 refrigerant anymore? And I told them there's a simple backyard way how you can actually convert your compressor to R134A and I can show you guys how to do that today. Now again, going off of this, this is the backyard way. This is not the most professional way. There could be a proper way to do this separately, but I'm just going off of what I've done and what's worked for me in the past. And I mean, I've been using, I've been doing this for probably about like the last eight years, not on this car directly, but on my old Z32. I did this and it worked perfect for like, again, six to eight years. So the reason why I'm doing this on this car, it does not have a leak. Um, the issue is is that when we pulled the motor we pulled the compressor off we pulled the compressor lines off when we pulled the compressor lines off the system was bled um, the system sat with an open open valves and stuff and it was bleeding and it was totally emptied um, for about three weeks when we did all the work to the motor here so um basically all you have to do is just locate your AC compressor, okay? Make sure your lines are all connected, which they are obviously, because I connected everything back and I've just waited so long. It's actually been about a year that I haven't done this. Um, last summer wasn't that bad. It's already been pretty crazy the last couple days here. So that's why I'm getting into it now. But all you gotta do, it, make sure that everything's sealed, make sure everything's good. Um, you do wanna make sure that that system is bled. So everything is, there's no refrigerant in there because you don't wanna mix refrigerants. So. The issue is, is that with these cars, they used to take R1 or R12. R12 now is, I, I don't know if it's illegal, quote unquote, um, but it's just, you can't find it anymore. You can't use it anymore. Some shops do still have it or whatnot, but um, everybody's basically going to the R134. So now I just went to advance. I picked this up for like $28, this whole kit here. It comes with the hose. It comes with your gauge. It comes with the refrigerant. The issue is that we run into these cars, depending on the year, this is a 92, I don't know how the other cars are, I know my 93 is the same way, um, like this, but basically what we run into, since there's no refrigerant in the system, you need to locate your low pressure hose, okay? Your high pressure is typically this red cap up top here, right kind of across the plenum, okay? High pressure, low pressure is this black one right here. This is the one you're gonna wanna fill. And the issue is, is that this hose here does not fit onto these ports okay so what you need to do is go out to advanced auto parts okay and you're gonna buy this r12 to r134 um, retrofit parts kit it comes with like a bunch of different nozzles here or whatnot our adapter which I found out it's like the longer one that fits this hose and fits this nozzle here okay so all I'm gonna do is screw this on we're gonna hook this up and then I'll show you the next steps before we get into that fitting that I was going to tell you guys about. I just want to thank you guys so much for reaching out and ordering these t-shirts. It's been a really big help, especially with what I'm doing currently on this car and currently doing on the drift car. So again, if you guys do ever want to order a t-shirt, all you have to do is DM me um, on Facebook, Instagram, or leave a comment below and I, we can swap uh, emails or whatnot and I can get these shipped out to you. Thank you for all the support, you guys. You guys freaking rock and uh, the Zebras merch is out there. Back to our setup here. All you have to do is find this port. So I found out that the longer one fits on the lower pressure port the best. Um, and it's got a good seal. So then before anything, okay, just make sure that you don't lose your caps. So I usually leave them right here in the strut tire well. You can leave that one on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the car and have the car get to operating temp. That's gonna be your first step. So now since you guys see that the car is at operating temp. Typically operating temp is around, I think it's like 175 to 180, um, depending on uh, the FSM, I think. Um, but yeah, I, th I would say 180 is normal, uh, and that's degrees in Fahrenheit. Then what I'll do, okay, since we're here, I'm gonna roll down the windows. Windows are rolled down. Then what you do is you go here, I'm gonna hit your auto button. You're gonna turn this on the lowest setting that you can possibly do and that's 60 for uh like i mean this digital gauge i don't know how it is for the manual gauges but um i mean it should just go all the way blue okay make sure that the fan speed is all the way up okay you're gonna have this car you're gonna have the car run for about a minute or so while since it's already at operating temp you just want this to run 
And another thing that you want to do is make sure that the doors are going to be open. Okay, so I got to go over here, open this door. This is just so um, the cold air is not recycling. Okay, so now since the car's running, what you want to do is you want to focus on the compressor. So the compressor is that piece down there, okay? And what you want to make sure is that each component of the compressor is moving. So that, as you can see, the belt's, the belt's driving and the uh, metal component right under the belt there is also spinning. That means that it's actually working. Now all we need to do is connect our refrigerant. Okay, it's clipped on there. Now we have our gauge, okay? The refrigerant will have a cap that you're gonna need to take off. Again, I put it in my uh, well there so I don't have to worry about it. And we have our gauge. The can says to shake the can a bit before you start it, okay? And to the what the bottle says is that you're just gonna hold this to the 12 o'clock position, and as you're filling up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna shake the bottle from 12 to three. 12 to three, 12 to three. So you just wanna make sure that you're keeping the bottle shaking a little bit while you're filling, okay? You can hold it upside down and apply the pressure and then shake it this way too. Um, I found out that sometimes it works better upside down. Depends on who you are, if you wanna follow the directions in the can or whatnot, but yeah. So now since we have everything set up, all you gotta do is make sure that you're looking at your gauge and then you're gonna just press the button down. As you guys can see, with me not having the uh, button down, okay, you can see, so before it was in the green, so it was saying that it was low, okay? Once I push the button down, you're gonna see it jump to red because that's we're adding pressure to the system. Once you let go, you can see now we're pretty much full. Now since we're in that blue zone, we're gonna see exactly how the air is feeling inside the car, okay? Oh yeah, night and day. We're gonna let that run we're gonna let this cycle for like two or three minutes and then you're gonna shut the car down and then after the shutting the car down we're gonna actually go and disconnect um, the refrigerant and then we'll assess from there and I do want to let you guys know when you start charging the system again the, the motor is gonna run a little bit different due to the fact that the compressor now is spinning fully and running and recharging it so you will hear like a, 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 a difference in the motor when you start to notice that uh, the system's charged. Let the car run for a little bit, like I said, three, th two to three minutes, nothing major. Let the car run, and then we're just gonna disconnect. You're gonna hear that. And then we'll take off this. And then, um, now this is totally up to you. If you wanna leave this on, you can leave it on. If you wanna make it look OEM, you can make it look OEM. But what I typically do is I let this sit, so um, I let the system sit now for about like five minutes. Don't let the car run. Keep, let everything just kind of cool down a little bit. Take a couple seconds, five, five, 10 minutes. Come back and then I'll reassess. So I'll start the car. I'll start um, the AC unit going with the doors open again. And then uh, I'll come back with the refrigerant and I'll just put this back on, test it to see exactly where we're at on the gauge. So again, what you want to really make sure is that mine literally had nothing in it. So when I first put this on there, when, if I did not push the button down, it was the needle was here. Once I push the button down, it shows how much pounds of pressure that I was putting into. I think it was between like 150 and 100. I would say like 125 pounds of pressure. That's what it was using to add this into the system. And then as you're doing that, it's in the red. Once you let go, you'll see it kind of climb. Like once you let go of the button, you'll see the needle climb. And then again, the best bet is to get it in with like in the 35 range, but since this system hasn't had any refrigerant in it in forever, in my mind a little bit, that I would add a little bit more just in case if I, if some, if there is a leak or whatnot, then I can diagnose that later on. So I, I just put it about 45. So right before the alert stage, the yellow, um, cause you just don't want to overcharge the system or whatnot. So again, um, yeah, that's where I put it about like right about the 45, like 35, like 40 to 45 range. I had the needle as you guys saw. Another thing that you guys want to uh, make sure is that you d either you have, if you have too less of refrigerant in the system, or if you have too much of the refrigerant in the system, your AC is not going to work right. Uh, your compressor is going to either turn off and on, or it's not going to work at all. So again, you want to stay within those specs. Um, but yeah, so we're going to wait a couple minutes and then reassess. 
So with the car back running at operating temp again, we're gonna check our gauge and we're in the blue and we're good. So now all I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, shut the car down one more time, disconnect our refrigerant here and uh, again, I like the OEM look, so I'm gonna take this uh, filling port off and then just put our old cap back on and we're good to go and we got AC. So super easy, simple, quick video for you guys. Again, I wanna put a disclaimer out. This is the backyard way that I've learned um, that I've talked to a couple individuals in the Z world and they have not had an issue. I did this years ago, never had an issue. I used to daily my Z from Philly to Massachusetts. I mean, I already know I'm gonna get some backlash. I typically do, but it is what it is. Hopefully you guys found this out that this was super helpful for you guys. It's super easy and it's super cheap to actually do and you don't have to go bring it to a, a pro shop and do it yourself. But again, guys, thank you for all the support, watching, liking the videos, leaving comments, buying merch. You guys are awesome and I can't wait. School's done. Drifting's coming up. I got some more uh, in-depth footage coming for you guys for the drift car. And then we got some drift events coming up. Hopefully you guys found this video informative and helpful. And again, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.